Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at end other from string 2, and this is a Java solution. The problem states, given two strings, return true if either of the strings appears at the very end of the other string, ignoring upper lowercase differences. In other words, the computation should not be case sensitive. Note, str2 lowercase returns the lowercase version of a string. So this problem, though in strings 2, doesn't require a loop. It's looking to see if you understand how to use basic conditional statements, understand how to use some string methods, and also is a great opportunity to try and generalize an approach so that you understand how to use substring. So let me show you how this is done. So let's just look at the examples here. We see parameter A is high ABC and parameter B is ABC. And we see that ABC is contained as the last three characters in high ABC. So that's true. In the second case, ABC is the first parameter, high ABC is the second parameter. And we notice that the last three letters of high ABC is ABC. Um, and so it returns true. Notice here is highlighting this idea that it is not case sensitive. This is capital A, small b, capital C, and this is small a, capital B, small c. And then we can see in the final case that ABC is our first parameter, string A, and this is our second parameter, string B, and of course it's there at the end, so we get true. Okay, so what's step one? Step one is going to be making a string. It's taking A and saying A is equal to A dot to lowercase. We're just going to convert a to lowercase using that instance method in the string class, and b is equal to b dot to lowercase. So now, interestingly, you'll notice that the problem has to work whether the smaller string is in the first parameter or the second parameter. So I'm going to make two new strings. I'm going to make one called large, and I'm going to assume that a is the large one. I'll make a second string called small, and I'll assume b is the small one. And now what I want to do is I want to check if that's true. So I'm going to say if a dot length is less than b dot length, and if that is the case, then the large is going to be b, and the small is going to be a. Some people will set up two conditional statements here to check if a.length is less than b, else if b.length. But again, you can do this really simply by just assuming something first and then checking that assumption. So now what we need to do is the last thing is we have to check, oh, too much Python, we have to check the check for the small string at the end of the large string. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this case here, and I'm just going to paste it here, and I'm going to do this process of generalization. Um, I always encourage students when they're learning how to do this to start off by taking a concrete case and then generalizing it. I usually suggest two or three. I'm going to do one here, but you'll see, get the idea of this if you haven't been watching my other videos. So in this case, we see that the large is equal to this one, and we can see pretty simply that small is equal to this one. Now you'll notice that we've changed those to lowercase, so we're going to make this all lowercase here, high, and let's put some indexes in here just so we know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to grab these last three characters of large. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to say large.substring, and I can do this in a concrete case. I can see really quickly that this is going to be 2, 2, 5. And again, I want to check to make sure that this makes sense because I'm looking for a substring of length 3 because our smallest length 3, and I can say 5 minus 2 is, of course, 3. It makes sense. So now the question is, scroll down a little bit here, how do I generalize this? Okay, well, we're always generalizing based on our lengths, and I can see that this 5 is the length of the large string, so this is going to be generalizing, it's going to be large dot substring something comma the large dot length. Okay, so what is this something? Okay, so we look here too. Well, how can I, if I know the length of the large is 3 and the length of the small is, sorry, the length of the large is 5 and the length of the small is 3, how can I perform some, some math yet too? Well, we can pretty quickly see that we have large dot length minus small dot length. Now, you know, I feel pretty confident with this, and I'm pretty comfortable, so I've done one case, but often when I'm working with students, I'll get them to do two or three cases um, where these values will be different in a concrete case before they generalize. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say string check is equal to, and we're going to say large dot substring, and I'm going to say large dot length minus small dot length, and large dot length. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, we want to return true or false here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if 
check dot equals, and this is really important, dot equals, or is check check dot equals small. Well, what are we going to do in this case? We're going to return true. Wrong language, return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And I hit go, and there it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to take this out for a second, and I'm going to put it below so we see all the code at once, and let's kind of tighten this code up a little bit and talk about some changes we can do. Well, the first thing we can do is, is this is a single if statement, so I can get rid of these braces if I want, because there's one line associated with that if condition. Here, there's two lines with the if condition, so I can't get rid of it. The next thing I'd notice is the fact that this if returns true if it's true, returns false if it's false, so I'm just going to actually return the result of that Boolean expression. So I can get rid of those. I need to put a semicolon there now. And I hit go. Works, no problem. Now, the other thing you can do here, which is really quite useful, is, you know, I've converted them both to lowercase here, but it turns out I can get away with not doing this by simply taking advantage of a different method. There's the equals method, but there's also the equals. And in fact, let's just do this instead. Let's comment this out instead. We're going to do equals ignore case. And that works as well. So notice you have this other nice method called equals ignore case. You know, I'm going through this pretty quickly, well, six minutes, but why don't I take an opportunity to show you this as well. Turn check dot compare to ignore case small split to zero. So this is one you might see from time to time. And I really want to highlight that this is a really great way to compare strings as well. So what compare to ignore case does is it actually returns an integer. If they're the same string, that integer is zero. And then depending on which string is smaller or larger, it will return a positive or negative value. Um, and, it, and what this is really useful for is this is super useful. Compare to and compare to ignore case, ignore case are really useful when trying to tell the alphabetical order of words. So it's a really super powerful comparing thing because you can actually know whether check would be smaller alphabetically than small or small would be based on the integer value there. So just a nice opportunity to highlight that. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.